I think, you know, I think some of the challenges revolve around how we understand human rights today. And um, there are three main challenges which I would mention. I think one is the question of, are these particular rights justiciable? Meaning, can you go to court and can you go to a tribunal and have them vindicate those rights? There are also questions about how effective the system of human rights is in accounting for violations of these rights, which are social determinants. And I think also one of the challenges which we see revolves around the focus of human rights on states. And I think the social determinants of health ask us to look beyond states and accountability, which is broader. But if you take the primary human rights, which are implicated by social determinants of health, those primary human rights are what we would call economic, social, and cultural rights. And there's been an age-old debate around the globe. Um, I would say that debate is less relevant today, but it's still a debate around whether those rights are justiciable. Justiciable is a, a big legal word to say, can you enforce those rights? And there's been a tension throughout the world about the enforcement of these rights, which depend on resources. Um, all of these social determinants are not simply about resources, but they're connected to resources, which states must have and use and spend. But I think the concern about justiciability has been significantly resolved in the human rights arena. Um, human rights tribunals, courts, uh, special rapporteurs relating to economic, social, and cultural rights, a plethora of persons have helped to clarify what's the standard by which you judge whether these rights have been properly implemented and fulfilled. So I think even though one of the challenges to social determinants of health being understood in the context of human rights is, if they are human rights, how do I enforce them? And the answer to that question is, we do know the standards today, which have been articulated by a range of actors, including the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, which explains to us what the standard is for determining whether that right has been violated or not. So the other big question which often comes up is, are human rights an effective way of securing these social determinants? Is the system of accountability which human rights uses a good one for ensuring that these rights are meaningfully enforced, are brought into being? Um, given that, as many of you know in the Americas, impunity is the is the anxiety which we all have everywhere, you know, from the top in the north all the way down. And I would say human rights obviously does have a system of accountability. It isn't always the best system for pro providing the reparations or the remedies which are going to address all of the structural dimensions um, relating to social determinants of health, but it nevertheless has gone some way already to doing so that we've seen litigation throughout Latin America uh, where courts are awarding and um, addressing the question of social determinants of health with remedies which have budgetary implications, which address larger social and economic policy issues, which are tough ones for courts, but not impossible ones. So I think the human rights system of accountability adds something of value to the question of social determinants of health. It's a challenge um, to find an effective system within the human rights sphere, but it is still a valuable tool. And then I think, I think another challenge which we see in relation to human rights um, and social determinants of health and being understood as interchangeable um, qualities is that human rights systems and regimes tend to focus on what states do, not exclusively, but a large part of what human rights mechanisms do is to um, question and to hold to account the actions of state. And one health expert has explained that we need accountability beyond borders. We need accountability for what multinationals do throughout the Americas. We need accountability for what international fin financial institutions are doing in relation to development and health, which has implications throughout the region, including through austerity programs. Um, we need to also look at what donor states are doing and the relationship between states, not just what one states, particularly those who are most disadvantaged, 
do, but also the relationship between states. And even though historically human rights has focused on states, we're beginning to see a far more robust discussion within human rights discourse about the larger global economic context and also the larger conditions of equal inequality in the globe. And I noted, for example, the Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty in a very bold report in 2015 has called attention to the way in which many international financial institutions are no human rights zones, um, don't adequately contemplate and consider human rights in their work. And I would say that's indicative of the way in which human rights today in 2016 not only is contemplating the responsibility of states in relation to those inside of their borders, but the responsibility of a wide range of actors in securing justice and peace and dignity for everyone in the Americas. Well, I think the Americas has always been a region in which human rights matters. Um, I've just finished a term on the Inter-American Commission and had a very good sense all throughout the Americas of the ways in which we in this hemisphere think about ourselves and our lives in the context of human dignity and human rights. And so I think there is instinctively and naturally um, in the debate about social determinants of health an understanding in this region that this is a debate also about human rights. So I think the possible impact of this commission is that there can be an agenda for the Americas, um, an agenda which deepens the, the 2030 agenda on social, on, um, on sustainable development, um, an agenda which is connected to the decade of people of African descent, and a range of other initiatives taking place right now um, in which we're deeply concerned about inequalities and inequity. And I think a hemispheric agenda um, is a valuable one for a region which, although it is diverse, um, is one which has faced a range of similar concerns and anxieties and a similar set of global economic um, pressures and a context which has produced the inequalities and the inequities.